Well, thanks, Dr. Hennigan, for coming to our presentation. Uh, over the last few months, we've been able to learn a lot about process control and different control strategies, and we've been able to apply this to a scenario where we have reservoirs and we're trying to control them together. Uh, this four reservoir system is basically there's two tanks above, tanks three and tanks four, and they gravity drain in tanks one and two, and they're supplied by these two pumps, one and two. Uh, one actually goes into tank four, and two goes into tank three, um, but there's a disturbance. There's a gamma valve in the middle that if you change that valve, it'll bypass those upper systems and control the lower tanks. And so our task was to control these lower tanks, the set point there. Um, we did three different methods of control. Um, we tried non-interacting PID controllers, PID, interacting PID controllers, and model predictive control. And we actually, um, we looked at a little bit of literature and the real system um, that a lot of those applied to is big agricultural reservoirs. And so that's kind of the analog to what this experiment is for. Um, the first scenario is non-interacting PID controllers. Um, you could tune these PID controllers really well if your gamma valve was either zero or one. Um, and so you could set it perfectly. If you see the first half of that graph, um, it tracks perfectly when the gamma value is zero. But then halfway through, we add a disturbance in there, and it starts to oscillate out of control. It, it cannot handle those any kind of disturbances there. Um, this kind of system would be useful if you knew that your real system either was going to have a fully open or a fully closed valve. To overcome some of these shortcomings, uh, we implemented an interacting PID controller. And so in this case, um, each controller had a feed-forward loop going to the other controller so that they would each know the output of the other and be able to tra change those pump settings accordingly. Um, we used RGA analysis to decide which controller should control which pump for the different tank levels. Um, and that actually changed depending on the gamma value. Um, as you can see in this graph, the uh, rise time and the, um, the time to reach the set point um, was a little long. Um, but it was able to reach the set point um, even with intermediate gamma values. Um, and you can see here at time about 7,000, um, there's a little jump in the lower tank um, actual level. And that's when we changed the gamma value and it was still able to track back down um, to the set point. Um, so this, this implementation was a little slow to reach the set point, um, but it was able to handle the, the disturbance and the change in the disturbance uh, pretty well. The last method we used was model predictive control. We used a model that was already created uh, for this network of uh, reservoirs. We found that this method had excellent set point tracking and disturbance rejection. For example, in this graph above, we immediately changed the gamma value to see how it would respond. And the blue curve shows how the model predicted the, that it would need to respond to be able to reject the disturbance in the pumps. And as we can see, the measured curve, which is in yellow, immediately followed this, this model, the same slope. And there's also a third curve in pink, which is the bias model. The, the measured model actually completely covers the bias model, which would represent how the model would, would correspond to this specific system. So we're, we see that the model is able to correspond exactly how, how the model would want it to control to reject the disturbance and control the pumps, therefore. And we found that for some reason in this model, it didn't work for gamma values below 0.5, but it would, had excellent set point tracking, disturbance rejection, and a couple of the trade-offs for it was that um, it took additional time for computing and it would take additional time and resources to create this model. In conclusion, however, um, we have determined that model predictive control would be the best for controlling the heights of these reservoirs. It had the best set point tracking and the best disturbance rejection as we change those values of the valve positions. However, the other two could have their place depending on the design requirements. The interacting PID controllers took a long time to settle, um, but it would be a cheaper and easier solution to implement um, as long as the end height of the reservoir was more important than the time it took to get there. Also, the non-interacting controllers could be used if it was known ahead of time that the valves would either be fully open or fully closed and wouldn't change very often. That is our presentation. Any questions?